In this video, I'm going to be attaching a Grandberg Alaskan winch to my 36 inch Grandberg mill. Hey, hi, Glenn here at the workshop at the gardens. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to be unboxing the Alaskan winch and attaching it, kind of walking you through how to attach it to your mill. And then we're going to take it out to the log yard and finish milling a log that we started already. It'll be a great comparison because I milled that log earlier. There is a video up here, put the card up there for milling that log. I'm gonna finish a couple cuts on that and then we're gonna do a whole nother log just to get a good feel for the winch itself on a mill. And then I'll be answering the most important question that you have. Do you really need a winch on a 36 inch mill? Okay, first things first, we're gonna set the mill aside. Uh, I have the whole mill and bar taken off because I needed to use my chainsaw for doing a log salvage and bucking a log. So we're going to end up doing a little bit of cleaning, maintenance on the saw, not on the video, but uh, just getting it ready to go on. All right, let's see what we have. Most importantly, you get your Grandberg sticker. A nice little set screw kind of to keep the whole cable from undoing. And it actually seems pretty good. Nice little spring. We'll see how it lasts the first time it gets hit. So I'm going to speed up through the sorting out of all the parts and pieces, organize them all a little bit. If you have uh, put your mill together or put a mill together, a Grand Bird product, you'll know that the instructions are very informative, great pictures, and fairly easy to work. And the mill themselves are pretty simple. So you'll understand how to take it apart, slide things in there, and just keep track that there's different sizes of everything. And there's two different sizes of carriage bolts. There's some three quarters. There's four of those and there's two that are one inch. And this calls for the one inch. by creating from the end all the way out with the winch with the cord and then attaching to a small little ball that you put on this side. So we're going to repeat kind of what we just did, loosening up outside bolts. Setup. It appears. 
appears that when not in use, hook it here. That worked perfect. Winch is attached, set up to the mill. That is all that goes on this. Setting this aside. All right, this is a fairly easy setup. Looks like ball goes first. Run one of the three-quarter carriage down. That drops on. It says tighten into place. Apparently, I can't tighten it into place by my hands. Well, solves that. It's not moving. I put a piece of cloth on there, a rag, because I really didn't want teeth marks on there. So I'll tighten up the one that is on the mill itself. And that tightens up so it becomes adjustable so that gets attached to the log and that gives you some movement to hook up the carabiner. All in all pretty easy assembly there's no doubt about that a nice easy assembly. I'm not going to show you me putting this on to the mill just sharpened up a new chain so I'm gonna have a new chain on here for, uh, for kind of the test cutting but I'll get it all set up and Let's head out to the log yard and do some cutting. So we're out here in the log yard. This is a piece of ash that I had milled earlier. We're gonna be setting it up. We put uh, the lever down on this end. I don't quite have enough room to hook it to the log itself. So I just wedged a small piece in there, which should give us the support. Get that hooked up and then we will start in cutting a little bit and then hook up the cable itself. Okay, four screws in, set this so it's just down. One of the theories is that you uh, have it so that the string is or the, the rope cord is coming in just at a little bit of a down pressure so I'm just above that that set So this is my very first cut using the winch. It's not my first cut by all means using an Alaskan mill. I had pulled three or four slabs off this log earlier in the season, and I will put a card up above, which just shows me milling that. So maybe it's a good video to watch just to see the comparison of not using a winch and the whole process of milling a log. But first things first, after you get the saw started into the log um, and it's resting there, then you pull the cord out and bring it all the way down to the lever assembly and that's where you take the carabiner and hook into the lever assembly. There is also, um, I think I mentioned it inside the shop, it's adjustable so at each time that you do another cut you can lower it down before you need to reset the lever assembly. Because I had already milled off this log, there was no room on the log itself to uh, hook up the lever assembly. So I did wedge a nice piece of wood in there and attached to that lever itself. So it, I think that worked out fairly well. And then, it, then it's off the milling and pretty straightforward. Um, you'll see my reaction at the end. I'll save it for there. 
but noticeably um, equal pressure. And what I noticed uh, a, a lot from when I'm milling without a winch is I ended up rocking the saw back and forth just to kind of as the pressure and cut. And what I didn't do here is rock the saw. I mean, I had a nice even pressure going all the way across the way that the winch is set up um, from the winch itself to the ball on the other side. It pulls the saw very, very equal. And just like when you're milling without a winch, you learn to feel exactly how much pressure you need to keep it moving. And quite honestly, it is very intuitive. It is very quick to learn. And I think by the time I get through three logs or three cuts here, I'll kind of have a good feel for it and then just start using it. Excited to be adding uh, a winch to a bigger uh, chainsaw build uh, mill setup that I'll have. But it is a, it's a fun little experience to start milling again uh, with the winch. And you'll notice it, it, it it's a lot more effortless just as you don't have to push a lot of pressure. You're just slowly turning that wrench and keeping the pressure there. Just the mechanics uh, keeps it all nice and tight so you're not forcing and pushing on the upper body. That's really noticeable that there's less fatigue going on. And uh, it, it's rather pleasurable to be milling with the wrench. get to the end of the log the, the cord falls off I would probably recommend that you unhook it and tie it and tighten it up and use the little set screw probably prevent a cord from getting cut while milling um, it's got to be sticking in your spacers as you go there uh, but you do notice right away with the, the extra pressure that you have to push on the mill to get through that cut I didn't time it exactly how long it took to get through, but it, it definitely felt faster um, using the winch than I did uh, when I cut this log not using the winch. And now it's time for the most enjoyable part of milling and opening up a log and taking a slab off. And that is to see what's on in the inside. So we're going to grab a couple little logs. I don't have any of my drying pallets ready to flip this over. I just wanted to get the winch going and see what we had here. So uh, we'll throw a couple logs down there. We'll flip this uh, over and see how pretty it is on the inside. Uh, 12 foot piece of ash milling it at uh, two inches just uh, eight quarter so not too heavy but yeah still enough there flipping it over and I think probably the, what I'm most uh, interested in seeing is the cut quality and it's nice and smooth not any crazy little uh, riff marks in there great experience so of course let's do a couple more cuts we need to do that even though we are late for dinner. Um, too much fun. Get another cut going. And that will finish off that 12 uh, foot ash log in no time at all. Woo, okay, okay. So my, my plan on this video was to cut this log, grab another log and really like get into it and really understand if I'm going to like the winch or not like the winch. And <laughs> it took about maybe a half inch, maybe an inch into the log. And I was like, damn, this is nice. So um, 
Wow, what a difference. If you have a chainsaw mill and you don't have a winch, you remember that first log you cut and you got excited because you're like, man, I'm cutting lumber, I'm cutting wood. It, it's that feeling again with the winch on there. And I've cut a lot of slabs without it and it's that good. So uh, I don't know if I need to go into like the build quality and all of that stuff, it's Granberg. Um, probably what I would say is make sure you order an extra string because I can see the, the string getting cut at some point. Um, but slick, easy, the cut quality is better. The pressure, it just keeps a constant pressure. Fatigue wise, before if you've done milling, you're pushing, you're pushing. That fatigue is not there. Mentioned cut quality. I had to do a third slab. I am late for dinner. I'm in trouble, but that was fun. All right, so. Um, that's it. So if you have a mill, you don't have a winch, order one today. Yes, it's going to take four months to get it, but order it today so you get it. If you're buying a mill from Grandberg, order the mill, order the winch. That simple. Wow. Um, there we go. Didn't expect to do the wrap up now, but heck yeah. Get a winch. It's that good. All right. Hey, Ben Glenn with the workshop at the gardens. And I'm going to clean up and get the heck out of here because dinner's ready. <laughs> See you next time. Enjoy.